dear faithful fathers McKenna and Maguire are now traveling in a trance. And trance was once a great kingdom, but today it's quite worldly republic. But the royal family still exists. And I noticed the other day that the wife of the heir of the throne is named Philomena de France, the Duchess of Vendôme. It is fascinating uh, to note that Saint Philomena, virgin and martyr, whose votive mass we have today and whose feast is next week, was also a princess of a small kingdom in Greece during the time of the Roman Empire. Her parents, the king and queen, were originally pagans who could not have a child. But when they, from the missionary work from their doctor, were baptized and converted, God blessed them with a child whom they named Philomena, or Daughter of Light, because on the day of her baptism, she was born to the faith. The affection of this royal couple to their daughter was so great that they had her always with them. So when the royal couple had to make a journey to Rome to make peace treaty with the emperor, they took their then 13-year-old Philomena with them. During the audience, the emperor named Diocletian who was a cruel persecutor of Christians, fell in love to young Philomena. He said to the king that his kingdom would be forever protected by Rome if only the king would let him marry Philomena. The parents were honored for proposal, but the young princess refused because she had already professed herself to Christ and was resolute to remain unmarried. Philomena saw her dear parents fall at her knees and say to her with tears in their eyes, Dear child, have pity on your father, your mother, your country, our country, our subjects. But she answered that Christ came before everything, and before you, before my country, my kingdom is heaven. Furious Emperor Diocletian commanded a guard to chain an anchor around Philomena's neck and bury her deep in the waters of the river Tiber. The order was executed and she was cast into the water, but God sent her two angels who unfastened the anchor. The angels transported her gently in full view of the crowds upon the river bank. She came back unharmed, not even wet, after being plunged with the heavy anchor. Emperor then ordered Philomena's head to be cut off. The day that was so happy for her and saw her enter into glory was Friday, the third hour after midday, the same hour that our Lord died. Dear faithful, what a glorious courage this little girl had for her heavenly fatherland. Therefore, it is such a tragic that she finds so few here on earthly land who still remember her. The new church has purged her from her calendar like it did for many saints of the 14 holy helpers of which Father Maguire wrote in this week's bulletin. But St. Philomena has a special place in this list because, like her, many of the lives of our dear saints had been rewritten during these tumultuous revolutionary years. But St. Philomena was purged because they said she never existed. Can you think of a greater insult against a saint whose existence we know from the discovery of her tomb, from private revelations, and from her inclusion to the Missal and Roman breviary by the infallible Church. The children sometimes have arguments with their siblings, and, and you know that in the burst of anger or passion, they might easily say things about them 
which they do not mean. But think how utterly hurtful and painful to them would be to say that you're not my brother or you're not my sister. How heart-sinking insult it would be not only to them but to their parents as well. And remember, we Catholics believe in the communion of saints, that is, that all God's children, whether here on earth or in purgatory or in heaven, are all the children of our Heavenly Father. We should let Saint Philomena be our guide on the road among the saints of Jesus and Mary. It's a touching reunion tale in the Bible when Jacob, who had many years been enemy of his brother Esau, was finally reunited with his uh, brother. And the, when and the, and Jacob came to meet his brother, he embraced him and clasping him fast about the neck, uh, he kissed him and they both wept. And Esau uh, took uh, his affection and, and said, Let's go, let us go on together and I will accompany thee in thy journey. The faithful of God are always in communion with each other, whether here on earth, in purgatory, or in heaven, like Saint Philomena uh, is. And let her accompany you as well in your journey to our Heavenly Father's home, our true goal, and our true and final Father. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.